When Elon Musk isn't buying Twitter or launching satellites into space, he has a side hustle you may have heard of called Tesla. Electric vehicles like the ones manufactured by Tesla run on batteries, mostly lithium ion batteries. And Elon recently tweeted about getting into the lithium mining business. So why would Tesla want to mine lithium? And how difficult could it be anyway? Before answering these questions, it's worth noting that the lithium value chain is more complex than those of most other mined commodities. Let's take 30 seconds to look at iron ore, the most mined metal by tonnage as an example. Rock containing high percentages of iron is dug out of the ground. The rock is then crushed, grinded and treated to reduce the size of the pieces and produce pellets, which are fed into a blast furnace along with other ingredients to produce pig iron, which then goes into another furnace for conversion into the crude steel that is the basis for steel applications used in everything from skyscrapers to bridges to wind turbines to the bodies of vehicles. This whole process typically involves just two parties, iron ore miners and steel makers. Lithium, on the other hand, is usually mined from a hard rock mineral called spodumene, or from brine deposits, which are accumulations of saline groundwater enriched in dissolved lithium. After being processed to form a concentrate with around 6% lithium content, it then goes to a refinery to create one of two compounds, lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Most major lithium producers, including the two biggest of all, Albemarle and SQM, have both mining and refining operations. Although, due to the high capital costs, the refineries are often joint ventures between two or more producers. But it's worth it because, as Musk himself has pointed out, lithium refining is a license to print money with both lithium carbonate and hydroxide selling for seven to eight times more per ton than lithium concentrate, which is already a lucrative business in its own right. The next stage in the value chain is where the lithium producers exit the scene and the specialist chemicals companies enter. Here, the lithium compounds are combined with oxides of other metals, such as nickel, cobalt, and manganese to form cathode active material. Cathodes being the positive electrodes in batteries. The cathodes are then paired up with their negative counterpart, the anodes, whose main ingredient is mined or synthetically produced graphite. Yes, that same material used to make pencils and tennis rackets to create the battery cells and ultimately the battery packs that go into electric vehicles. Many of the names involved in the cathode and or battery space will be familiar to viewers as subsidiaries of Japanese or Korean conglomerates such as Mitsubishi, Panasonic, Hitachi, Toshiba, Samsung, LG and POSCO. But the biggest battery producer of all is China's Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited, or as it's known by its acronym CATL, which produces more than one third of all the world's EV batteries. The problem with such a complex value chain, as anyone who's purchased from Amazon or Alibaba in the past year or so has come to understand, is that congestion at the top of the supply chain can trickle down all the way to the bottom. And as Musk has long understood, and other automakers are just waking up to, years of underinvestment in lithium mines prior to the start of the EV boom in 2020 are likely to create bottlenecks further down the lithium ion value battery chain well into the future, jeopardizing the ability of Tesla and its peers to create those shiny electric vehicles we all want to drive. The battery grade lithium market went into a supply deficit a couple of years ago, and this deficit is expected to grow dramatically with industry experts benchmark minerals predicting that by the year 2030, there will be a gap of as much as 500,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent between demand on the one hand and supply from currently operating mines, expansions and new mine developments on the other. If we consider that the average Tesla Model 3 requires roughly 70 kilograms or 154 pounds of lithium carbonate or its equivalent, this equates to having demand for 7 million more vehicles than automakers can possibly supply. If no further lithium mines are added to the project pipeline, then this gap could blow out to the equivalent of as many as 50 million vehicles by the year 2040. Growing concerns over supply security caused prices of lithium materials to almost triple in 2022 alone, with spodumene concentrate fetching a record price of more than $8,500 per tonne on a standardised 6% lithium basis in an auction run by Australia's Pilbara Minerals, and prices of carbonate and hydroxide surging to more than $80,000 per tonne in some cases. Despite only contributing around 2-3% to of the total content of the battery cell, Musk has named lithium the single biggest cost growth item for Tesla, and he even called it a major limiting factor in the production of electric vehicles. You see, 
From the geology under our feet to the cars we drive, it's all connected. While lithium isn't all that rare, most of it is mined in just two locations. Australia, where spodumene operations in Western Australia and the Northern Territory account for around 52% of all global lithium mine production, and in the so-called lithium triangle in the Atacama Desert in Chile and Argentina, where brine operations account for an additional 30%. While China dominates battery production, it only accounts for 13% of lithium mine production. So Chinese mining and refining companies source a lot of their raw material from Australian and South American lithium mines, some of which they own and even operate through joint venture agreements with other miners. The United States has only one active lithium mine, a brine operation run by Albemarle in Nevada. As for where new lithium mine production could come from, well, the answer is again the Chile-Argentina combination, as well as Australia, with about 52 and 26% of known reserves respectively. Other countries with projects include the United States, Canada, Bolivia, which also has a share of the lithium triangle, the United Kingdom, and Germany, and automakers are no doubt keeping an eye on all of them. So, could Tesla get into the lithium mining business? Well, yes and no. It's difficult to imagine Tesla actually mining lithium or any of the other materials it needs for its batteries. There are virtually no examples of companies owning the entire value chain from mining through to end use, and with good reason. Mining is technically complex, it's capital intensive, and it poses plenty of risks, such as extreme weather events, opposition from local communities, or even having the government suddenly revoke your permits. Tesla famously moved its headquarters from California to Texas because of tensions with California legislators, but you can't move a mineral deposit from where nature intended it to be. In short, mining is best left to the mining companies. Probably the only genuine exception to this rule is De Beers, both a diamond miner and a diamond jewelry retailer but it's a unique case. First, it began life as a diamond miner, not as a retailer, way back in 1888. So mining is in its DNA. It was only later that it expanded its business outside of mining to monopolize distribution of rough diamonds. Also, it's De Beers Diamond Jewelers retail stores sell only a fraction of the diamonds originating in its mines. Most of its rough diamonds are sold to other retailers, manufacturers, and traders. Getting back to Tesla, while it's hard to imagine we'll ever see Elon Musk putting on a high-vis jacket and getting behind the controls of a giant excavator, this isn't the company's only option. Tesla could sign new offtake agreements to purchase lithium concentrate for mines currently under construction, as it has with lithium mine developers such as Piedmont Lithium in Tennessee and Liontown Resources in Western Australia, and with various nickel and cobalt mines, and as numerous other automakers, including Mercedes-Benz and China's BYD, have also done with lithium mines. However, offtake agreements carry some risk, as Tesla found out the hard way recently when a non-binding agreement with an Australian producer was cancelled, presumably because the miner understood it could earn higher prices on the spot market. Musk's firm could go a step further and become a technical partner to a mine, as it is done with a nickel mine on the French Pacific Island territory of New Caledonia, where it is helping to improve product and sustainability standards in addition to purchasing product from the mine. But this also carries risk, with the Tesla name recently being dragged through the headlines for the wrong reasons when there was a leak at the mine's tailings dam, tailings being the technical term for waste produced from mineral processing. Tesla could even fund development of a lithium mine, as Ford has done with a $300 million loan to Liontown Resources to develop the Kathleen Valley lithium mine, one of the mines from which Tesla is also hoping to source product. Through any of these types of agreements, Tesla can secure supply over EV battery raw materials without taking on the risks involved with purchasing an equity stake in a mine. While it's doubtful that Tesla will ever own or operate a mine, there is a strong possibility of it building a presence one step down the value chain. If recent reports about it working on a lithium refinery project in Corpus Christi, Texas are any indicator. In a recent application filed with the Texas Comptroller's Office and reported on by Reuters, the EV manufacturer described plans to build a potential battery-grade lithium hydroxide refining facility that will process raw material into a usable state for battery production. It remains to be seen who Tesla will partner with on this refinery project, but it's certainly plausible that it could pull it off, especially given what it has achieved further downstream with the battery gigafactory it operates in partnership with Panasonic in Nevada, and the additional factories it is building in Austin, Texas, and near Berlin, Germany. All of which is to say that Musk and Tesla have constantly defied conventional thinking. So, who knows, maybe they will one day get into the mining business after all.
I'm your host Nedav for Mining the World. Thank you for watching my debut video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, share, and hit the subscribe button for more content on the connection between mining, metals, and our modern world. Thank you.